Hi guys! Have you heard about the new BQBX 3D printer? The announced specs and features are making everyone curious and eager to see how the printer will perform. In this video, we will unbox the printer and check all the components in detail. You want to know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! I'm Sandra and today we will unbox and check the brand new BQBX 3D printer. But before we start, don't forget to hit like in this video and subscribe our channel. Also, if you want to help us make more cool videos, go ahead and join our Patreon page. So, the BX is still in pre-production and at the moment it's only available on Kickstarter. The earliest estimate delivery date for the guys that ordered the printer on Kickstarter is between December of this year and January of next year. However, we just received one of the first units and we will try it out. Being one of the first units means that the manufacturer can still make changes to the final release version. So, let's unbox the machine. Hey you guys, this is Rui. So, right off the bat, the machine looks well packed. At the top we can see a greetings card and a filament sample. Next we have the power cord and one piece of the spool holder. Then we have a bag with screws. Here is a bag with many things such as cables and tools and also the other piece of the spool holder. And this is the print head. Then we have this big box with the display inside. And this is the top half of the printer. The print surface is sitting on the heat pad. And this is the bottom half of the printer. There were a couple of plastic parts on the bottom of the box. These plastic parts are used to cover the metal profile. And this is everything that came inside the package. Inside the bag with screws, we have the screws that secure the base of the printer to the top half, screws for the display and for the print head. Also some extra screws and a spare nozzle. In the other bag, we have a couple of USB cables, a memory card and card reader, a cutter, another USB cable and this one is a Type-C cable and some tools. The memory card is a 2GB micro SD. The tools include some zip ties, long round tip allen keys and a wrench. And these are the spool holder parts. And this is the print head. It's a small and light direct drive setup and with a 7 to 1 metal dual gear extruder. This one comes with a sock covering the heat block and inside a bore heat break, but it's also possible to choose an all-metal one instead. The layer cooling fan duct is located at the back as well as the blower. At the top we have the filament entry, the lever and the connector. For this the manufacturer decided to use an HDMI connector and cable to power everything here in the extruder. Since it's a big HDMI connector, it should hold just fine, but we can test this later on. Now, the question is if the HDMI cable can handle the power for the major components. Well, we will talk a bit about this in our review video. At one side, we can see the hot end fan and the leveling sensor. 
This leveling sensor is an inductive one. And at the other side, the small extruder stepper motor. This is a NEMA 14 stepper motor. Inside this black box, we have the printer's display. It's a big 7-inch touch display. You can control it with touch or with the control knob at the side. One of the nice features of this printer is that it has the means to directly connect a Raspberry Pi. And you can do that here at the back of the display. But we will go through this in more detail in the assembly. At the side, we have a USB and memory card slot. Together with the display, there are a few more bags. In them, we have these small boards. The bigger one is installed at the back of the display if you want to use a Raspberry Pi. The smaller ones are used to connect the Pi. One is for the Raspberry Pi 3 models and the other is for the Raspberry Pi 4 model. And this is the top half of the printer. It comes with two pieces of foam protecting the lead screws. Here we can see the dual Z setup with the two stepper motors at the bottom connected to the lead screws by rigid couplings. One other feature the manufacturer is announcing is that this printer is equipped with stepper motors that have 0.9 degrees of step angle. Most of the printers on the market are equipped with stepper motors that have 1.8 degrees of step angle. This means that the stepper motors of the BX have more precision and will produce smoother curves. This is one more thing that we will want to test on our review. Next to one of the Z stepper motors, we have a Z end stop switch. To make the assembly easier, the cables come with labels on them. At the top and under the top beam, we can see a strip of LEDs. The strip is actually inserted in the metal profile. These are RGB LEDs, which means that we will probably be able to choose its color. One more detail is that there is no belt connecting the lead screws. We know that each motor is being driven with individual drivers, so we are not sure if they will keep in sync after the motors are turned off. That is something that we need to test later on. And this is the front side of the top half. Like the print head, the X carriage is a small one. For the X axis, we cannot find any end stop switch, which means that the driver is set with sensorless homing. On one end of the X gantry, we see the X axis belt tensioner. On the side of the frame, we have this carbon fiber effect that looks super cool, but actually, there is no carbon fiber parts here. It's a sticker on the aluminum profile, but still looks pretty cool. Okay, and this is the bottom half of the printer. Locking the Y-axis and securing the bed, we have a couple of foam pieces. The print volume of the BX is 250 by 250 by 250 millimeters. On the bed, we have the magnetic steel sheet. At the first sight, we are a bit concerned with the magnetic strength of this. We need to test if, when printing big models near the edge, the print surface will hold or will lift. We'll have to see. Under the bed, we can see the blue springs and leveling knobs. At the front and kind of hidden under the Y-axis, we have the memory card slot and USB Type-C connector. The location of these slots are probably not the best choice. Also at the front, we have the Y-axis belt tensioner. At the left side, we have the main power input connector and the main switch. At the back of the heat bed, 
we have a strain relief holding the heat bed cable which is a good thing to have. And this is how the base of the printer looks like. There's also no end stop on the Y axis so this driver is also set with sensorless homing. Now let's check the electronics. To access the main board we have to remove these four screws on this panel. On the inside of this panel we have the pinout and layout printed on. This is also a nice touch and very handy to have. On the board we can see the five drivers. Two of them are for the dual Z stepper motors. At the side of the board we have a big blower sending air to the microcontroller and drivers. The drivers on this printer are the Trinamic TMC2226. The board was designed by Big Tree Tech and it's labeled as SKR SEBX version 1.0. The chosen microcontroller is a 32 bit from ST Microelectronics, based on the ARM Cortex M7 and running at 400 MHz. There is also a small cooling fan at the front panel. Now, to access the power supply, we need to turn the base upside down and remove these five screws on this bottom panel. The power supply is a Meanwell which is a good power supply. And it's a 24 volt and 14.6 amp model. Ok, we are now ready to assemble the printer and test it. But that will be on a different video. It will be online very soon, so don't miss it. And that's it you guys, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Bye!